energy, from cooking to cars to computers. It's fundamental to modern life. You've probably noticed that making and using energy has an impact. But how would you go about reducing that impact? It's difficult to know where to start, isn't it? Luckily, you've come to the right place because this is the story of energy. Let's start with the mobile phone, something now over 92% of us Brits own. Like all the other gizmos and gadgets we have in our lives, your phone uses energy. So for every second that it's plugged in, your electricity bill will be creeping up. And it all adds up too, with the typical house using around 3,330 kilowatt hours per year, which costs about 480 pounds. Certainly not an insignificant amount. Now, there are lots of homes in the UK, but not so many places that produce electricity, which means that the electricity you use has to travel huge distances between the power station and your plug. To do this, it has to travel at high voltage on top of these big old metal pylons. Well, weirdly, this method is actually quite inefficient, as transporting the electricity actually requires some of its own power and a lot of electricity is lost before anyone even has the chance to use it. But before any electricity can be transported, it's got to be generated. In the UK, there are quite a few ways this happens, but the main methods are nuclear, coal and gas. We do use some forms of renewable energy, like wind, solar and hydro, but currently these only provide a fraction of our needs. For this story, we're going to focus on gas, because in the last 30 years, it has overtaken coal as our biggest source of fuel for electricity production. Let's start with the science. Like all other fossil fuels, natural gas is formed underground over thousands of years, and we use it much quicker than it can be renewed. It's extracted by drilling under the Earth's surface into gas fields. The problem is, as gas fields start to run out, Gas companies have to move on to more expensive and riskier methods to get their gas. In the UK, our gas has almost run out, so we now import more gas than we produce, and as our reserves decline, it won't be long before we completely depend on gas imported from other countries. When we import it, from mainland Europe for example, gas can be transported through a vast network of pipelines that run across the continent. Unfortunately, these pipes can be turned off, something that's actually happened in the past. Some more distant countries also have huge natural gas reserves, which are turned into a liquid to transport overseas. But the UK isn't the only country that wants to get its hands on this gas, so there's competition for shipments. What's more, revenues from selling a country's fuel rarely benefit its local people. Instead, profits often line the pockets of wealthy shareholders. Right. Let's head back to good old Blighty. While some of the gas is delivered to homes, most of it is piped directly to power stations, where it's burnt to drive turbines that then produce electricity. While gas produces up to 45% less CO2 than coal, it still accounts for a whopping 5.3 billion tonnes a year of CO2 emissions. OK, let's now revisit our trusty mobile, still plugged in of course. But that's not the only thing in this house that needs power. Since 1970, the number of electronic goods in the average UK household has trebled, contributing to a 600% increase in energy consumption. And charging mobile phones is just the tip of the iceberg. We all leave devices on standby, forget to switch off lights, and in general, use electronic devices that we don't really need. Multiply that by an estimated 25 million homes in the UK, add in the demands of industry, transport, retail and agriculture, and you realise that we're a nation hooked on energy. And the worrying thing is, our energy demands are increasing all the time, which means we're becoming more and more dependent on foreign energy sources and on fossil fuels that are running out. So, what's the answer? Well, let's reassess the facts. Firstly, fossil fuels, like gas, will run out. Secondly, fossil fuels cause problems to people and the planet. So, it's clear we need to change our relationship with energy. But how? 
First and foremost, you can use less. This not only means using fewer electrical devices, it also means using those you do have more efficiently. Secondly, think about switching to a green energy supplier or even generating your own electricity. And finally, don't be afraid to push politicians and companies for change. By voting for the greenest parties, signing petitions, writing to MPs and avoiding organisations that operate unsustainably, you can create change. So, while we all have a part to play in the complex story of energy, we can all be part of the solution too. For more information and advice, visit the LifeSquared website, where we'll give you some tips and ideas to help you take the next step.